Hey, what's up guys? My name is Acherno and welcome to episode 90 of Game Programming. Unbelievable, 90 episodes. So what we're gonna do today is basically do what you guys wanna do, right? And that is, well, non-player characters. Um, I did ask you guys to vote on my website here. And um, as you can see, the poll seems to have won four non-player characters or mobs, okay? Many came second inventory system items. I'll probably ask you guys again once we complete mobs because mobs are gonna be a multi-episode thing, obviously. They don't take five seconds to make. Um, but um, most of you, 46%, voted for mobs so that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do all right and this poll's closed now so don't bother going there <laughs> and voting um again so uh right so mobs right non-player characters um um ai basically okay um i'm not sure what kind of ai we should implement right because um again this is a video game like we could do anything um i think what i'm going to do though what i'm gonna do is uh, I, I am actually gonna add a few more mobs. I might make them different skins. This <laughs> looks awful, by the way, this player. I, I, I do like the new aesthetic of the game, but the uh, player sprite isn't isn't, uh, isn't great. I will fix him up though. I think I'll just fix him up um, off camera. But um, yeah, so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is just add a few more of these guys for now. Um, I might make some different, some more sprites, um, again, you know, off camera and add them in. But um, I think the plan is gonna be to show you guys two kinds of AI, right? One AI is just the AI that isn't really an AI, right? It's just like, um, it's just a short little script essentially that just tells the character to just move around randomly, okay? So you might stay here for a while, then you might move over here. You know, you might, you might see that kind of AI in like a, in like a, a Pokemon game, for example, um, where the characters kind of just stand there and then they move around and they might be gardening or whatever and they just move around, but, but not scripted moving around, okay? Random moving around, okay? And then the other type, I might, I might actually show you guys three types. One of the type might be a waypoint type. So they might have waypoints at, at which they stand. That could be really cool. Actually, I think I'm gonna do the waypoint one. So I'll show you guys random movement, waypoint movement, and then pathfinding. Probably using the A-star pathfinding algorithm because um, it's it's quite simple. Well, it's, actually, that's a lie. It's quite complicated, especially if you're new to it. But uh, once you get it, it's, it's quite simple and um, very powerful, very efficient, very fast. Um, and it'll basically, uh, imagine if there's a player, if there's a mob right over here where I'm kind of shooting, where, where my mouse pointer is. If that guy wants to get to you, um, he's just going to be able to walk around this entire structure and get to you using the shortest path possible. Um, that's essentially an A-star search algorithm. So that stuff is used for chasing, essentially. Okay. Now, um, that being said, today, all we're going to cover, that, that's a, that, that was like an introduction of what we're going to cover. Now, all I'm going to do today is actually just make... Um, an actual type of mob. So in, in our mob folder, we've got a mob.java class. If we take a look at that, this is essentially the template or the super class. Um, it, it is an abstract class as well for our mobs, okay? Um, and because of that, I'm not actually sure why it's an abstract class. It seems to be implementing everything. <laughs> uh, I think we did use this somewhere. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, check one thing because I think that we did use, um, oh, did we use it? No, that's wrong. Huh. Okay. First of all, in the player class, let's get rid of all this animation code because we don't need it anymore. I'm just going to delete that because we simplified everything by moving it essentially into the animated sprite class. Um, and then back in mob, um, let's make sure that, uh, and in entity as well, uh, entities. Yeah. Okay. So entities need to be why on earth would I want to open Java's entity class? Come on. Um, so update, I think um, it'd be fair to say that um, all entities should be updated. Um, mm, oh yeah, because we didn't make this abstract, did we? I'm just trying to remember here. I think we tried to, but uh, Spawner didn't have update or something. I don't know, this is like changing our entire structure. Let's abstract this, I think, though. Um, does particle spawner not have an update method? Yeah, okay, fair enough. It's all right, we don't have to mark them as um, as abstract per se, uh, especially not entity. Let's get rid of this for now. Um, we will keep update in here, though. All right. Whoops, get rid of that. Okay, so that's just taking a look at our structure. And, um, of course, uh, in render for the mob thing that should have a uh, screen screen and that'll make that error go away if we import this. Okay, cool. So mobs have to be rendered and they have to be updated. And in fact, I will just um, 
make this abstract as well. So what is abstract? You guys might not know what abstract is. I was actually thinking, I was pondering the idea over my summer break, which is basically over the Christmas break, of making a um a Java a Java series, essentially how to freaking learn Java, because a lot of people ask me like, I really wanna watch your videos, but again, you assume that we have minimal Java knowledge, where can I learn that Java knowledge? And I keep sending people to other channels and that might not be um ideal, because obviously I can't guarantee the quality of the content there. Um, so I might make a quick, uh, Java series, which basically how to learn Java, I guess, wrote to Java. I don't know what to call it. Java programming, <laughs> game programming, network chat programming, 3d game programming and Java programming. I don't know, but the, um, abstract just means that it doesn't have to implement anything. Okay. So abstract means that instead of implementing, having an implementation for this, um, update method here, we can have it in any other class. Okay. So basically abstract just marks this class as not having to implement this method. Um, that's all it is. But obviously if we make this player class and the player class, as you can see, is not abstract, it has to implement all of the, um, all of the abstract, uh, methods that it, it uh, extends from mob or it inherits from mob. Um, it's sort of kind of like an interface kind of as if it was an interface, that's how you have to implement them. Anyway, um, that was a probably pretty poor explanation, but let's get it. Let's get on with this. So, um, We've got all this stuff and the, and the point of making mob, right? Because at the moment we didn't have to. So far in our game, we could just go from entity. Let me open our entity class so you guys know what I'm talking about. We could go straight from entity to mo uh, entity to player, okay? And we could have all the code in player. But the reason I made mob is, of course, um, I guess to future-proof um, our game or to keep it um, su sustainable, essentially, right? Because um, we want to add mobs in the future. So now, that, now because we've got this mob class, if we want to make a mob, it is really simple. Okay. So over here in mob, I want to right click on the folder, hit, well, hit, not hit, go to <laughs> right click on the folder, hit new and then class. And I'm going to type, Ooh, well, I like to call, um, I like to call my first mob dummy and dummy is essentially just like a test mob kind of thing. Um, so make sure that it extends mob. Okay. Um, and as you can see, because mob is abstract and dummy isn't, we get a bunch of errors here and it says that it must implement the inherited abstract method mob.update and probably mob.render as well. So if we add unimplemented methods, oh my goodness, why, why Eclipse? Why are you doing this? Uh, cannot implement anything either due to compile errors or the project build bothers. Okay. Okay. Whatever. We'll do it. We'll do it ourselves. So make sure that mob has an update method. And make sure that mob has a, uh, a render method with, of course, the screen parameter here. And that is it. And as you can see, if we do that and implement that, then our error goes away. Okay. So once we've done that, we should probably give it a, a constructor. And mob doesn't have a constructor. Neither does entity, in fact. So, oh, it does. Okay. So we, we can make our own constructor, really. In the player, we've got a nice little constructor that adds the keyboard input. Clearly, we don't need that. But what I will do is when we do create a dummy, um, a dummy mob. Let's make sure that we actually um, uh, add a coordinate for it to spawn at. Okay, because that that's just like a little thing that I like to do. Um, okay, awesome. So um, the other thing is I keep calling these mobs, right? Um, that just because that term's gotten really popular with like the advent of Minecraft and everything. Um, they really should probably be called NPCs, which is non-player characters. Um, I just like mob, I think just rolls off the tongue better than saying NPC because NPC is three syllables. Mob is one syllable. So, um, that's why I say mob, honestly, um, a mob basically stands for a mo mobile entity. So it's just an entity that is mobile. That's why it gives some, uh, it's basically a non-player character. Okay. So that's what a mob is just in case you guys are wondering. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, once we've done that, we should set this dot X equal to X, uh, multiplied by 16, which is the same as shifted right, uh, left, sorry, four places. Um, this is just, this will just, uh, this is, this is just some bit level optimizations that will actually speed things up a little bit. Um, and they will actually speed things up by the way, I've done extensive testing on this, <laughs> trust me for university. Um, so yes, now, um, let's see, probably not so much in this case, by the way, but for four loops, especially, um, using bitwise operators instead of operators, um, normal operators actually does speed things up because some JREs and some compilers don't actually perform those optimizations at compile time. So that's why it's, uh, it's important, um, to make sure that you do do that. And, and the other thing is people are like, well, why don't you keep it, um, time 16 for readability, right? Because of course that's the same as what I just wrote. Um, the thing is, this isn't, this is actually not like, this is more readable to me. This is as readable to me, if not more, more readable. I just like the way it looks. Okay. So that's, uh, 
That's to all you guys who are gonna get on my case about that. So, player, what else does it have? So, update, of course. It needs to actually have a sprite. So make sure that we, in dummy, let's just set the sprite equal to right now to be sprite um, dot player. Now there, there is, um in player, I think we set it to animated sprite, don't we? Is that what we do? No, we don't, not exactly. Sprite equals, oh, okay, set it to player forward. Let's set sprite equal to player forward right now because we're not gonna animate stuff today. But um, we'll set sprite equal to player forward. So update, we'll do absolutely nothing for now. And in render, what we wanna do is screen dot render uh, player, we should change that to render mob at, of course, the X coordinate, the Y coordinate um, with the sprite and flip. Uh, why is flip even here? I'll set this to false. What is flip? Do we use flip? Render player, flip. Oh, flip, right. Oh, is that, that's the stuff that we used for, mm, yeah, okay. Sorry, I completely forgot what that was. That's the stuff we used for before um, we had the anime sprite, I think. Yeah, okay, so anyway, um. Yeah, so what that should do, of course, is when you do do this, what it does is it creates a new dummy object, which, of course, renders itself at that uh, location. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to control click on this render player method. It's going to open our method over here. What I want to do is I'm going to right click on it, hit references. Sorry, my bad. Hit refactor and rename. Okay. Or you can hit alt shift R, of course. Um, and what this will allow, us, will allow us to do is essentially rename this render player class to whatever we want and it will update it everywhere. So obviously we call the method render player multiple times in our code. Um, and what we would have to do if we just rename it, we'd have to actually copy and paste the name everywhere. So we'd have to change the name to the new name everywhere. By refactoring it though, it will update everywhere. So let's change this to render mob instead of render player. Okay, hit enter. And as you can see, if we go back to our dummy, this is immediately changed to render mob. And if we go back to our player class, this is changed to render mob. So that's why refactoring is great. Um, and it's awesome for renaming stuff, among other things, of course. So that's it, okay? If we go into our spawn level, which is where we do stuff, um, if and let's, uh, in, in, in just the spawn level thing, let's actually just add the um, entity into class. In fact, um, let's not confuse you guys. Uh, we, where do we... Um, what do we add stuff? Where do we add the player? Um, I don't even know. Do we do that on level? I don't think so. Okay, it doesn't matter. In spawn level, um, we'll just hit add and then uh, entity A, of course. We'll just hit add new dummy and we'll add him at, uh, if I knew the coordinates, that would help. Uh, let's hit player quickly. Where do we add the player? Uh, we added the player at uh, a tile coordinate 1962, it seems. Um, so we'll do the same thing here. So we'll add a dummy at, let's just say uh, 19, uh, 20, and maybe like 55. So it's just above the player. Um, and let's import that, of course. And that's it, right? So let's launch and see what happens here. Oh, look at that. We've got our old sprite here. But what we have here is, as you can see, a mob. And he doesn't move right now but he can, okay? And next time, we're gonna cover some really basic movement operations for this mob, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit the like button. Again, if this hits 200 likes, I'll put out a video tomorrow. If this hits 300 likes within like 24 hours, then I will put um, two videos up tomorrow, okay? So yeah, hit the like button. I'll see you guys later, goodbye.